M S W Media. Thanks to AG1 for supporting our show. If you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash daily beans. That's drinkag1.com slash daily beans. Hello and welcome to the Daily Beans for Tuesday, September 12th, 2023. Today, new updates on the draining of the pool into the server room that housed surveillance video at Mar-a-Lago. The Department of Justice has dropped their case against Mike Flynn business partner Bijan Rafikian. Luis Rubiales has resigned as president of the Spanish Football Federation after kissing Spain forward Jenny Hermosa without consent. And Donald Trump has filed a motion to disqualify Judge Tanya Chutkin and recuse her from his case. I'm Allison Gill. <laughs> and I'm Dana Goldberg. <laughs> I couldn't I could not save the laugh until after you, you were done because of that last part. It's just ridiculous. And um, everybody, I want to apologize. I have a bit of a raspy voice today. I lost my voice reading all that news yesterday. Um, but we have a normal size show today. So thanks so much for putting up with us for two entire segments <laughs> on yesterday's beans. No, my mom said she left it, though. So I'll take oh, it. Oh, good. Yeah. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> that was such a strange. That was such a strange. And how are you? Take it away, Dana. I'm fine. Everything's great. My mom hasn't heard that episode. And so I got no compliments. <laughs> After we recorded yesterday, we spent, what, three and a half hours watching U.S. Open tennis finals? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tweet, yeah, t texting each other about how annoyed we were with everything. <laughs> jo Djokovic beat um, Medvedev. Uh, I think I think it's pronounced Medvedev, but they called him Medvedev. So maybe maybe that's how he pronounces his name. But he beat him uh, in three sets. So and he took the match. And, and won. Yeah, as much as I'm not a fan of Djokovic for several reasons, and mostly it's his behavior off the court as well as some on the court, he's a powerhouse. I mean, his game yesterday was pretty unbelievable. So, um, yeah, yeah. It's like, I, you can't take that away. And he's very sweet when he's hugging his daughter. So there must be some good parts of him. Yeah, that was a very sweet moment, I thought. But um, yeah, I, I didn't I wasn't really rooting for either one of them, but it was some amazing tennis. So it really was. That's good. All right. We have a lot of news to get to today. So let's hit the hot notes. Hot notes. Oh, my God. OK, so there's some new reporting out from The New York Times on the Mar-a-Lago documents case. And Andy and I are going to discuss the legal implications of this reporting on the next episode of Jack. Oh, and by the way, if you're a five dollar patron of the Daily Beans, you also get the Jack podcast ad free and early, usually a whole day early. So. Back to this story. In true New York Times style, they have buried the lead again. Um, I should send them a trophy with a little shovel on top to congratulate them on how good they bury leads. <laughs> <laughs> because today they outdid themselves. This is a piece by Protests, Goldman, Foyer, and Haberman. And I'm just going to cut to the chase. And the chase is in graph 28. Paragraph 28. There are only 35 paragraphs in the whole story. <laughs> so it's uh, it's pretty incredible. So here's graph 28. Quote, soon after returning to his office, Mr. Tavares confided in a colleague, Renzo Navarre, what had just happened. And that's according to people with knowledge of what took place. And within days, Mr. Tavares relayed the story to a superior in Trump Tower. One executive uh, in New York, Matthew Calamari Jr., the Trump Organization's corporate director of security, apparently became alarmed. According to people with knowledge of the matter, he alerted the company's legal department, prompting a senior lawyer at the company to deliver a stern warning not to delete anything. <laughs> Don't delete stuff. <laughs> Thanks. Now, ultimately, the company handed over the footage and the indictment does not accuse anyone of deleting any tapes. Yet Mr. Tavares's testimony could be crucial to proving that Trump, Nauta, and De Oliveira were conspiring to obstruct the investigation. At one point after the subpoena for the footage had been issued, a worker drained the pool at the club 
and it flooded the room that housed the servers storing the surveillance footage. That's according to a person with knowledge of what took place. Now, it was unclear whether that was intentional and the servers were not damaged, but the timing of the flooding raised enough concern that Mr. Calamari ordered the servers moved to another location, according to a person with knowledge of the events. Mr. Tavares was aware they were moved, according to this person. Now, prosecutors could also call on Mr. Navarre and Mr. Calamari to testify at trial. And they could seek testimony from a former Mar-a-Lago employee referred to in the indictment as Trump Employee 5. In June of last year, the indictment said that employee discussed the footage with Mr. De Oliveira, who told him that he wanted to ask Mr. Tavares how long Mar-a-Lago stored its surveillance tapes. So, within days of De Oliveira telling Tavares that Trump wants the surveillance footage deleted, Tavares calls Calamari Jr. I told you the pig bungs, a.k.a. the Calamaris, were involved. Now, they have these motherfuckers on video trying to delete video. I can't, I can't, Stop it. I can't believe... I can't believe Nauda has not cooperated at this point, but definitely check out the episode of Jack that's out right now because Andy and I have some information on the cooperation agreement Tavares signed this past summer that we just learned about last week. Oh, my God. I still think it's crazy that of all the ideas, they were like, let's drain the pool and flood the room with water. I mean, how does that even come up as the option? Well, remember the conversation between De Oliveira and Tavares he was like, the boss wants it done. And Tavares was like, I don't have the administrative rights to do that. Um, so why, what do you want me to do? And he's like, the boss wants it done. So they, oh my God. they were just come, I, you know, again, it's not known that d- the draining of the pool and the flooding of the server room was intentional, but it seems like they were just out of options. <laughs> like, because Calamari yeah. wasn't going to do anything. Calamari told legal at the Trump organization, the lawyer, top lawyer was like, stop it. It was probably Alan Fuderfoss. I'm not sure who the source is for this story. He's like, don't delete. Sh- don't, please don't delete anything. That would be very against the law. <laughs> like, And so the, I just I could see Trump like no, 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 flood the server room, get it done. You know, just the- well, yeah, seriously, drain the pool. OK, God, all right. It's just bonkers. But that that in my head has to be what happened. <laughs> it has to be. Well, the, this is this next story is about the other crazy shit he thinks he can get away with and that he actually goes to try and do. This is from Barnes, Gregorian and Riley at NBC. So it seems his attorneys, Donald Trump's attorneys on Monday, they moved to recuse and disqualify the judge from presiding over the federal case, charging him with trying to illegally overturn the 2020 presidential election. In a court filing, attorneys for Trump cited U.S. District Judge Tanya Chutkin's references to the former president in other criminal cases tied to January 6th riot at the U.S. Capitol. Now, this is a quote. Judge Chutkin has, in connection with other cases, suggested that President Trump should be prosecuted and imprisoned. Now, such statements made before this case began and without due process are inherently disqualifying. Although Judge Chutkin may genuinely intend to give President Trump a fair trial and may believe that she can do so, her public statements unavoidably taint these proceedings regardless of outcome. That's what Trump's lawyers wrote. The filing asked that Chutkin recuse herself and that the court clerk randomly assign this matter to another district judge. Additionally, given the overriding public interest in ensuring the appearance of fairness in this proceeding, President Trump requests the court consider this motion on an expedited basis and pending resolution withhold rulings on any other pending motion. Well, Chutkin will be the only person ruling on this motion, which is sort of hilarious, and any decision on recusal would come from her. Uh, Judges do not need to wait for one party to move for their recusal and can remove themselves from cases if they feel they have any real or perceived conflicts of interest. She would have done that by now. A spokesperson for the court did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Monday's filings, they were expected. Trump has repeatedly bashed Chutkin, who happened to be an Obama nominee, and was randomly selected to hear the 2020 election case. On social media, he's called her a Trump-hating judge and demanding she recruits herself there. The filing centers on comments that Chutkin made in previous January 6th cases, with Trump's attorney saying that they showed she had a pre-existing opinion that Trump deserved to be criminally charged. Uh, So does the rest of the fucking country. 
In one instance, <laughs> during the October 2022 sentencing of January 6th defendant Christine Priola, Chudkin said, and I quote, the people who mobbed that Capitol were there in fealty, in loyalty to one man, not the Constitution, of which most of the people who came before me seem woefully ignorant, not to the ideals of this country and not to the principles of democracy. It's a blind loyalty to one person who, by the way, remains free to this day. And that's that's what they say. That's what they argue is her saying that he need, he's guilty and needs to be put in prison. All she said was that Correct. he she doesn't even name him. She could be talking about Rudy yep. Giuliani, <laughs> but we know it's Trump. All she said was that he remains free to this day. That's it. Now, the other example cited in the filing was from 2021, that sentencing hearing for January 6th defendant Robert Scott Palmer, who for a time had received the longest sentence in connection with the riot when Chutkin sentenced him to five years in prison. Palmer, who happens to be a Florida resident who wore a, and I quote, Florida for Trump hat and Trump themed American flag sweatshirt as he assaulted law enforcement officers with a fire extinguisher during the attack on the Capitol. And this is a quote from the story. Mr. Palmer, you have made a very good point, one that has been made before. The people who exhorted, exhorted you and encouraged you and rallied you to go and take action and to fight have not been charged. That is not this court's position. I don't charge anybody. I don't negotiate plea offers. I don't make charging decisions. I sentence people who have been pleaded guilty or who have been convicted. The issue of who has or has not been charged is not up before me. I don't have any influence on that. I have my opinions, but they are not relevant. Chutkin said that in a sentencing hearing. Again, very vague, by the way. Doesn't say who mm-hmm. should be sentenced, who should be convicted. Yeah, she actually specifically says, I don't make those cho- I don't make those decisions. That's not up to me. I don't yeah. do that. Um, she literally says that. I mean, like, it's pretty black and white to me. Yep. Trump's lawyers on Monday argued that, and I quote, public statements of this sort create a perception of prejudgment incompatible with our justice system. All right. In a case this widely watched of such monumental significance, the public must have the utmost confidence that the court will administer justice neutrally and dispassionately. Hmm. And so we'll see what happens this. She's the one that makes the decision. And I have a feeling she's going to say, Gift stuff, I'm not recusing myself. Yeah, she's not going to recuse. Um, and, and by the way, those two defendants, the two examples, the only two examples that they used were defendants that were arguing that Trump told them to do it. So yeah. that's why she was addressing him specifically or the people who told them to go march on the Capitol. There were like five people who gave speeches at the Ellipse that day. And she says in that second thing, you know, the, the issue of who has or has not been charged you know, she talks about the people who have sent you, the people, not the person. So it's just, I don't think it's going to stand up to scrutiny. Now, she just entered a minute order on the docket, by the way. There's a quick update. Um, she has ordered the DOJ to reply with their opposition, if they have one, by September 14th. So that's <laughs> two days from now. Um, and okay. she gave them three days, basically. And then she said Trump has three days to respond to their opposition. And then she reminded Trump's lawyers, hey, by the way, the protective order and per, you know, a previous ruling, you're supposed to confer with any with with the DOJ about any motion you're going to file. And you failed to do that. She, she says, I'm just reminding you, you need to confer with them to see if they're going to oppose next time because you didn't mention it in your filing. So she just kind of gave them the heads up that they made a little mistake there. So interesting. All right. Blast from the past. This is from the Mueller, she wrote, days. From Gerstein at Politico, the Justice Department has quietly abandoned one of the last prosecutions stemming from investigations into alleged foreign influence over Donald Trump's 2016 presidential campaign. In a court filing Monday, prosecutors indicated they're giving up their long-running quest to convict Bijan Rafikian, that's a California businessman and former business partner, of Mike Flynn, on charges of acting as an unregistered foreign agent for Turkey amid Trump's successful White House bid seven years ago. It's a bitter pill for prosecutors who convinced a jury in Alexandria, Virginia, to return two felony guilty verdicts against Rafikian, better known as Keon, following a week-long trial in 2019 and only about four hours of deliberations. Rafikian chose not to take the stand in his own defense. However, U.S. District Court Judge Anthony Trenga, who presided over the trial, soon became convinced that the guilty verdicts were not justified by the evidence prosecutors presented. He set aside the verdicts two months later 
prompting years of additional litigation that included two trips to the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals. The notice the Justice Department submitted in federal court in Alexandria, Virginia, signaling the end to the case, was terse and offered little insight into the decision to throw in the towel, but it said the appellate court's stance played a role in prosecutors opting to give it up. Quote, after carefully considering the Fourth Circuit's recent decision in this case and the principles of federal prosecution, the United States believes it's not in the public interest to pursue the case against defendant Bijan Rafikian further. That's prosecutors from Justice's National Security Division and the U.S. Attorney's Office in Alexandria. A Justice Department spokesman declined to comment uh, any further on this. Now, back in 2021, the Richmond-based Fourth Circuit sided with prosecutors and overturned Trenga's ruling, throwing out Rafikian's con conviction. So he was back being convicted, but left the door open for the judge, who's a G.W. Bush appointee, to grant the defendant a new trial. And Trenga did just that in March of 2022, holding that the evidence introduced at trial allowed only, quote, the weakest inference, unquote, that Rafiki enacted at Turkey's behest and he and Flynn carried out a plan. Um, basically, what they were doing was they were going to build a case for the U.S. government to deport a Turkish cleric and dissident named Fatullah Gulen. They were the ones that, that Mike Flynn was paid 15 grand to kidnap the guy and like whisk him away in the night back to Turkey. Oh, wow. When prosecutors returned to the Fourth Circuit, the court issued a two to one decision in May of this year, allowing Trenga's new trial ruling to stand. At a July hearing following that loss, prosecutors indicated they planned to proceed with a retrial, and Trenga had set that to begin on October 30th. Now, initial stages of the foreign agent investigation into Flynn and Rafikian's work related to Turkey were handled by federal prosecutors in Alexandria, but the inquiry was later folded into special counsel Robert Mueller's broader probe. That office eventually sent the case back to Alexandria um, for trial. Now, Rafikian's saga also became an illustration of the often haphazard application of justice during the Trump years. In 2017, Flynn cut a deal with Mueller's team to plead guilty to a single felony false statement charge and, through that, end his potential criminal exposure in a variety of matters, including his firm's $850,000 contract for the pro-Turkey work while he served as the top foreign policy advisor to candidate Trump. Flynn, who served as the national security advisor for 24 days at the outset of the Trump administration before being fired, uh, had been expected to be a key witness at Rafikian's trial. He had been expected to offer testimony that would incriminate his former partner in a scheme to avoid disclosing that Flynn's intel group and public relations effort was actually directed and controlled by Turkish government officials. However, just weeks before the trial, an acrimonious row broke out between prosecutors and a new set of attorneys that Flynn retained. That led to an abrupt decision by the government to drop Flynn as a witness and instead declare him a co-conspirator. The reversal came just after Flynn signed up a new combative defense lawyer by the name of Sidney Powell. Powell, who would, <laughs> later, who would later attain wide notoriety for her role in Trump's efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 election, and who was also now under indictment, insisted that the former Defense Intelligence Agency chief and Army Lieutenant General was the victim of prosecutorial misconduct and a setup by the FBI. After review... Attorney General Bill Barr moved to drop the prosecution of Flynn. Eventually, a judge agreed, but there was no similar move for Rafikian, and the proceedings against him continued. And the then president continued to fight his loss at the polls in November 2020. Flynn scored a broadly worded pardon from Trump that appeared to absolve him of all criminal liability related to the pro-Turkey project and other matters Mueller explored. However, there was no pardon for Rafikian, who fought on in court until the government relented on Monday. In the new filing, prosecutors called for the case against Rafikian to be dismissed with prejudice, meaning it could not be refiled. The dismissal requires Trenga's approval, but such motions are granted usually. Now, Dana, the Department of Justice has had a really hard time with Foreign Agents Registration Act charges. Tom Barrick, as we know, was acquitted of his 951 charges for lobbying for China. Gregory Craig had his conviction overturned for lobbying for Putin back to Ukrainian separatists. No charges were brought against Rudy for his Ukraine clown posse. So if David Weiss, who was appointed by Barr, intends to bring Farah charges against Hunter Biden, as discussed in that plea agreement hearing, I don't think they're going to have much luck. Um, we'll know what they're doing. Uh, we'll know what they're going to charge him with by September 29th. All signs are pointing to the gun charge, but we'll see. All right. Thank you, A.G. And here we are back to Spain. Luis Rubiales has resigned. As the president of the Spanish Football Federation, following criticism for his kissing Spain forward Jenny Hermosa at the Women's World Cup final presentation ceremony against her choice. 
Hermosa, 33, said the kiss after Spain beat England was not consensual, and she filed a legal complaint last Tuesday. Rubiales said he had submitted his resignation to Federation Acting President Pedro Rocha in a statement. And this is a quote, I cannot continue my work, he told Pierce Morgan, Jesus, on his television show. Now, the 46-year-old has also resigned from his position as vice president of UFA's executive committee. Now, Rubiales said he hoped his departure would boost Spain's joint bid for Morocco and Portugal to host the 2030 World Cup. He added, I have faith in the truth and I will do everything in my power to prevail. My daughters, my family, and the people who love me have suffered the effects of excessive persecution as well as many falsehoods. But it's also true that on the street, more and more every day, the truth is prevailing. What? Okay. Yeah, whatever the fuck that means, because Jenny Hermosa said you kissed her unconsensually. It's not a rumor on the street. It's caught on video. Now, some 81 Spain players, Spanish players, including all of the 23 World Cup winners, said they would not play for the national team again while Rubiales was in his position. We covered this in an amazing good news submission from one of our listeners. Now, World Cup winning manager Jorge Vilda, considered a close ally of Rubiales, by the way, was sacked on 5th of September amid the scandal with Monse Tome named as his, his successor. Politicians, footballers, and celebrities have spoken out against Rubiales while protesters gathered at the Federation's headquarters last month to demand his resignation. Now, Spain's acting labor minister, who's Yolanda Diaz, posted on Twitter, formerly uh, on X, formerly Twitter. I can't with that shit. But this was the tweet or the X or whatever you call it. The feminist country is advancing faster and faster. This transformation and improvement of our lives is inevitable. We are with you, Jenny, and with all women. Now, Irene Montero, Spain's equality minister, added, it's over. That was the quote. Hermosa's complaint was sexual assault, but Marta Durante Gill has also added an allegation of coercion when filing the high court after the forward told the prosecutor her relatives had been pressured by Rubiales and his professional entourage to say she, and I quote, justified and approved of what happened. Wow. I'm telling you, there's so much. Oh, yeah, it runs deep. It is now up to the court to present formal charges against Rubiales. Prior to the kiss, Rubiales had been seen grabbing his crotch in the proximity of Queen Letizia, who is the Queen of Spain, and her daughter while celebrating Spain's 1-0 win over England in Sydney. A high court judge will now assess the complaint and decide whether to accept or archive the request. If accepted, a magistrate will be assigned to lead an investigation, which will conclude either with a recommendation for the case to go to trial or to be dismissed. The charge of sexual assault under Spanish law can carry a punishment ranging from a fine to four years in prison. Hmm. Well, we'll see what they do and we'll stay on top of the story for you. Um, and we we're going to indeed. Yep. Because, I mean, you know, I these things just need to be followed to their to their conclusion. So um, this is good news. This is very good news. Um, I'm glad he has resigned his position. Uh, his quotes are weird, but, you know, whatever. Get out. <laughs> so, everybody, we have a lot of good news to get to, um, but we're going to take a quick break before we get there. If you have good news to send to us, you can do it by going to dailybeanspod.com and clicking on contact. Everybody stick around. We'll be right back. After these messages, we'll be right back. AG1. The daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. I drink it literally every morning. I drink AG1 right before I go to the gym. It makes me feel like I'm covering all my nutritional bases and giving my body exactly what it needs to be ready to tackle whatever comes my way. The constant shuffle of supplements wore me down until AG1 simplified the entire process. It's just one flavorful scoop. I get my daily multivitamin, minerals. I get supporting pre and probiotics, adaptogens, and a packed greens blend. AG1 saves me time and energy and money, so it will always be part of my daily routine. AG1 is more than just a supplement. It's a daily infusion of 75 meticulously chosen vitamins, minerals, probiotics, and ingredients derived from whole foods. These elements synergize to provide immense benefits from boosting my gut health to invigorating my energy levels. And I've even noticed more outward shine on my skin and my hair and nails. And the convenience of the AG1 travel packs ensures my regimen stays uninterrupted even when I'm on the road. All it takes is blending one scoop of powder with water each morning. I needed something I could rely on that filled the gaps in my nutrition, and nothing else has been more helpful in keeping my wellness plans on track. AG1 has been a seamless and easy daily habit 
which is one of the many reasons I'm such a big fan of AG1. So if you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash dailybeans. That's drinkag1.com slash dailybeans. Check it out. Finding your perfect home was hard, but thanks to Burrow, furnishing it has never been easier. Burrow's easy-to-assemble modular sofas and sectionals are made from premium, durable materials, including stain and scratch-resistant fabrics. So they're not just comfortable and stylish, they're built to last. Plus, every single Burrow order ships free right to your door. Right now, get 15% off your first order at burrow.com slash sxm. That's 15% off at burrow.com slash sxm. It's no surprise that newsmakers try to manipulate the audience. They want you to believe that they are the one holding the line and they'll use any trick they can to get you there. But don't let them fool you. Get unspun. I'm Amanda Sturgill. I've been a reporter, and today I teach future reporters to cut the spin and think critically about what newsmakers say. My podcast, Unspun, shows you how to know when you're being manipulated by the news. Learn to spot the tricks and how to make up your own mind about what's true. So if you're tired of being fooled by the news, subscribe to Unspun today. Unspun, because you deserve the truth. Everybody, welcome back. It's time for the good news. Good news, everyone. Then good news, everyone. Good news, good news. And if you have any good news, confessions, corrections, you want to play what the mutt or find the cat or what the cat, I, you know, hey, I'll guess your cat breed. It will always probably be the same thing that I'll guess maybe the same two or three breeds. Uh, I can also, we can do uh, horse breeds as well. What the heck wine. Um, you could send in a whoopee story, a blankie story. I love those so much about something that, you know, maybe the, a blankie that you still have from when you were a kid or a stuffed animal. Um, a shout out to a loved one or a, a local a business that you want to support in your area, or even an adoptable pet in your area if you don't have pod pet tax, whatever it is, you can send it to us at dailybeanspod.com and click on contact. First up, from Anonymous, from my local school district in Michigan. Recently, parents became enraged that a transgender girl uses the girl's bathroom. They've gathered enough support to sue the school district, saying it's a Title IX violation. Their lawyer is none other than Matt DiPerno. Yes, the same one charged for election fraud in Michigan. The good news, overwhelmingly, the rural community came out in support of the transgender girl saying, uh, whose business is it uh, w where a high school student pees, right? For pod tax, I haven't gotten any good photos of any reptile amphibian orgies in my pool or local lakes. So instead, here's a what the mutt. But since she's a purebred, it shouldn't be too hard. Look at this beautiful it's a Westie. baby. Yes, little West Highland Terrier with the smile. That smile Ugh. is amazing. So cute. I'm so glad that everybody in the rural community showed up to support this girl. That's so great. I'm telling you, times are changing. And those who you wouldn't think are our allies, they're everywhere. They are everywhere. So yeah, that makes me super happy to hear. All right. This one's from Jojo Rock. No pronouns on Jojo Rock. Just wanted to let you know that the picture with the couple in front of the map from yesterday is from the musical Wicked. A great Oh, the map is from the musical Wicked. It's a great picture of the stage pre-show, I assume. And I personally had the honor of seeing this three times, once in London's West End and twice in Dallas Music Hall. Random, but thought you'd like to know. The big hint on this was the green light they had on the Emerald City. Hell, I'm sure someone else tweeted faster than me. Or you all figured it out on your own. Jojo Rock, we did not. And so we very much appreciate <laughs> We did not figure that out. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for pointing it out. I know. Jojo. I I also saw Wicked in the West End in London. That was the that's where I saw my Wicked performance. Oh, amazing. How cool. Years ago. Yeah. It was incredible. Small world. Maybe you were at the same show. Very cool. <laughs> All right. Next up from Dog Momster, pronoun she and her. Good news. Here's this year's pick of pebbles with the limelight hydrangeas. These are like giant, beautiful aliens looking into my bedroom, but I also call them a bouquet on one stem. Because the blooms are so huge. My 97-year-old mom loves getting a bloom whenever they first come out. And when dried, can be a long-lasting ornament. Oh, how beautiful. Hello, kitten. You're Hello, a dog kitten. monster, but there's a kitten. Okay. 
<laughs> Cute. Thank you for that submission. Uh, all right. This is from Democrats Abroad Twitter admin. No pronouns on the Democrats Abroad, but here we go. Hello, source of daily hat beansness. Happiness. Very cute. I'm a volunteer with Democrats Abroad in Belgium and have some good news to share. Back in June this year, Dems Abroad held our annual general meeting and elected our new executive committee that will lead us through the upcoming 2023-24 elections. We had our previous international chair on your podcast last year to talk about all the amazing work Dems Abroad does around the globe. And we were thinking a chat with our new leadership could be a great motivator for all those Americans abroad to get out and vote this year. And next, you can see the new XCOM team here. We've got this link in the show notes. It's democratsabroad.org slash our underscore leadership. Now, PSA, an obligatory plug for voting from abroad. A reminder, or maybe news, to everyone out there, there are millions of Americans living around the globe that, and they're eligible to vote. Contrary to popular belief, we tend to lean left when we vote. So please, if you have a friend, family member, colleague who is overseas, tell them to vote and to send them to votefromabroad.org to register and request their ballots every year. For pod pet tax, I give you Alfie, one of the honorary DA Belgian mascots and part of our hashtag Barks for Biden team. Love it. <laughs> Thank you and the whole Beans team for all the work you do. You're a bright spot in our day. Look at this guy. Oh my God, he's cute. That was like a Schnauzer Terrier mix or something. Maybe it it's just a full Schnauzer. It does. Yeah, it's like the Westie, but with the snout. It's so cute. What a cute pupper. Thank you for that. I love his hat as well. He's, he's wearing like a Uncle Sam top hat. That's fantastic. Oh, and by the way, yeah, um, I'll have a producer reach out to the new team or if you can send us, um, email us their information, hello at MullerSheWrote.com. We'd love to have them on the show. Uh, all right. From Anonymous, pronoun she and her. Hi from Gettysburg. Last week, a member of the Twatsies and or Clanned Karenhood, Karenhood, Clanned Karenhood, if you prefer, <laughs> tried to get our tennis coach fired because she is a transgender person. I had had a hard day at the vet hospital, but I left as soon as possible to make it to the school board meeting. My neighbor who's on the school board was a Trump supporter, but I went up to her and gave her a big ass, big ass, big hug. And she told me that she was pissed as hell and was fighting for the coach. Justice prevailed and we got the coach reinstated. We can fight these school board bigots. I even saw a right winger that I know from online forums speak in favor of keeping this coach. We can build bridges, y'all. P.S. Thank fuck. I, I was drinking herbal tea prior to going in. Otherwise, I fear I would have been uh, more acute. <laughs> <laughs> Fun pics of our cat cheer squad. My Hail Lucifer shirt. That's oh, really funny. So great. The starburst in the middle. Look at the babies. A couple of moo cow kitty. So sweet. Tuxedo and a gray and white tabby. So cute. And Hail so Lucifer. Good. I love that shirt. Great shirt. Thank you so much for that. Very cute. Well done. Well done. Indeed. All right. This is from Clayton. Pronouns he and him. Hello, Beans Queens. I'm a recent listener, having joined the Leguminati after getting tired of the uh, milk toast centrism of other shows. Thanks, Mom, for the record. I'm sure you're listening. <laughs> I wanted to give a shout out to my fellow law students. I'm a 2L, which is a second year at UT Law, currently getting swamped by clinic and journal work. Shout out to all the other law students volunteering their time at clinics, resisting the call of big law and still trying to make good grades. We got this, y'all. Support each other and be the community you want to see. Pod Pet Tax is my beautiful panther mox depicted protecting me from the highway and posing in the sun. <laughs> she was my companion through my two years of COVID teacher and, whoa, what, as my two years of COVID teacher. As a COVID teacher. Oh, he got was it. A COVID she, teacher. Yeah, cool. thank you. My God and very much helped me survive a very lonely first semester. Now she's a spoil, spoiled older sister who loves law school almost as much as I do. Oh, she's beautiful. Every once in a while, words are hard for me, as you know, listeners. And so AG jumps in and helps me out. <laughs> it happens to me all the time, too. I we think just... I'm a little dyslexic. You you would be surprised how many times we have to get an edit because I've reversed words in the script. <laughs> me too, though. You help me out as well. Let's not. I, we just edit all those out. <laughs> That's true. You guys don't know what a mess this is over here. Yeah. Um, you should see today's edit list, y'all. It's 
So <laughs> let's give some shout outs to our producer and our editor on this episode because woo boy. Yes. Thank you so much to our amazing editors and sound producers. Uh, the Daily Beans is Desiree. So thank you. Thank you so much for, for handling this today. And we're sorry. Um, but anyway, more good news. Send it to us, please, at dailybeanspod.com and click on contact. Do you have any final thoughts before we get out of here today? And again, thanks, everybody. Dana's on the road, so we're using her Zoom audio today. So we appreciate you um, having patience with some of the audio stuff that that goes on. Uh, really, it means a lot to us that that uh, that you're cool with it. Yes, and that's I second that. Those are my final thoughts for today. Just thank you. <laughs> I second that. Final thought. I second that motion. Awesome. Well, we'll all be back in, right. your, back in your ears tomorrow. Um, so until then, please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Take care of the planet. Take care of your mental health. Vote blue over Q. And take everyone you know with you. I've been AG. And I've been DG. And them's the beans. The Daily Beans is written and executive produced by Allison Gill with additional research and reporting by Dana Goldberg. Sound design and editing is by Desiree McFarlane with art and web design by Joel Reeder with Moxie Design Studios. Music for The Daily Beans is written and performed by They Might Be Giants, and the show is a proud member of the MSW Media Network, a collection of creator-owned podcasts dedicated to news, politics, and justice. For more information, please visit mswmedia.com. MSW Media. Hi, I'm Liz Winstead. I'm Moji Alawode Al. And we're the hosts of Feminist Buzzkills, the only weekly podcast that helps you navigate the post row hellscape. We dissect all the news from that sketchy intersection of abortion and misogyny with our guests, the abortion providers and activists working on the ground. Plus, we have amazing comedians to help us laugh through the rage. Feminist Buzzkills drops Fridays wherever you get your pod fix. Listen and subscribe, because when BS is popping, we pop off. It's no surprise that newsmakers try to manipulate the audience. They want you to believe that they are the one holding the line and they'll use any trick they can to get you there. But don't let them fool you. Get unspun. I'm Amanda Sturgill. I've been a reporter, and today I teach future reporters to cut the spin and think critically about what newsmakers say. My podcast, Unspun, shows you how to know when you're being manipulated by the news. Learn to spot the tricks and how to make up your own mind about what's true. So if you're tired of being fooled by the news, subscribe to Unspun today. Unspun, because you deserve the truth.